Glenn Parker High Vibration Foundation. Thank you very much for joining me. I've done at least one, I've done a couple videos on detoxing. I've done a video on coffee enemas and I wanted to do another one on coffee enemas. Why? Because I think it is a very relative topic, uh, nutrition, uh, detoxing, decalcifying the pineal gland, um, and actually anti-inflammatory because you're raising glutathione levels. So it really is an all around good detox. It detoxes the bowels because you're washing everything out. So I wanted to address what I actually did because I had a pretty epic journey. I was sick for a very long time. I was considered terminal. I only kept myself alive um, by my own will to help my mom because I found out she wasn't doing well. I went to go visit her and I had packed up all my stuff and stuck it into storage and put my affairs in order in like the latter part of 2001. And then I found out that she wasn't doing well. So I stayed there and hung out and did everything and anything that I could for her. And as a result of that, I kept myself alive and I sought out solutions to what was going on. It gave me time to actually find vibrationally people that would be of assistance and can point me in directions that would help. And I had a naturopath that I went to and he gave me all this nutrition and uh, he looked at my blood live and he gave me solutions. He said, your blood, you know, you're lacking vitamin E, you need CoQ10 so your heart will be correctly, you get off these medications and these types of ideas and L-carnitine and D-ribose and a good quality oil on a daily basis in these particular doses. And that started to work and I started feeling better and I was balancing out my pHs, which is really critical um, because if your pHs are off, then a lot of things can live in your body. If your pHs are dead on, then things can't live in your body. They don't like it. It's, it's, a, it's a contra environment to bacteria and fungus and yeast and things like that. So I was feeling better, I was feeling better, and a couple of years had went by, and well, like a year, year and a half went by, and I'm like, I feel better, but I, I'm at a plateau. I can't seem to get any better than I am now, and I'm not definitely not 100% way far from it. He's like, well, have you done the coffee flush, you know, the coffee enema? I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to put anything in there, you know? And he's like, well, there you go. He's like, I did one yesterday, and he actually has these kits to show like your liver function and where you are in the way of liver function. And uh, it's done through urine. <clears throat> and he's like, it's on a scale from X to X. I think it's like from one to 11. Uh, and you know, it goes up from there. He's like, if I get somebody in here and they're at 11, then I send them to the hospital because <laughs> the game is almost over. Liver function is almost done. And He's like, you know, I was drinking, he, he's an ex-hippie, you know, band member, um, traveling around all the time, and sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and he used his naturopath knowledge, he went that direction to rescue himself, and then he started to rescue others. So he was drinking and doing his band thing, because he still plays music and stuff like this, and uh, plays live music at different places. He was drinking and carrying on, and he tested his liver function, and it was like, 99.5 so you know that's bad and he did a coffee flush and he tested it right after and you could see it went down like three three and a half points you know it went down into something that you know like into a six or something like that which is normal liver function that means your liver is functioning better and that means your enzymatic activity and your ability to clean your blood and to kill off viruses. All these, I mean, all these biomechanisms start to break down when any part of your body stops working. But your liver is really important. There's only be one of those in your body. <laughs> and it really needs to be working at as high efficiency as possible. So you had vetted proof. Um, and I thought about the next time I go see him is to document mine and maybe do two days. Do a day, go see him and has maybe be a month before I do liver flush and bring my camera and document my visit with him and you know doing the, the, the blood panel and then you know watching and doing the, um, the liver panel and everything showing all the different tests and then that evening do a liver flush and then have him go and do the test over again the next day to show the differential between the two just to show as a chemistry you know what that does for your biochemistry. With that said I did go ahead and try to do a coffee flush 
And to do a real coffee flush, um, like from end to end, it requires a bit of work. You need like berries and cream, you need like a ginger tea because you get very nauseous, it's releasing a lot of toxins and you fast that night and you have um, heavy whipping cream and berries for dinner and then you get up and the first thing that you do in the morning and you lay on one side and the first thing you do up in the morning, this isn't a guide, you know, you can find someone to guide you through this. I'm just giving you generalizations. <clears throat> and when you get up in the morning, you actually do the coffee flush and you do it a couple times to pull stuff out and you can really see, you know, these little nuts and stuff, these crazy looking things coming out and a lot of it's emulsified fat. Um, and it's pulling out toxins, it's pulling out heavy metals, it's pulling out all these things concurrently. <clears throat> now, you don't have to do that entire process. You can just do a coffee enema, or you can just do a cold water flush and, and flush out and detox your intestine. And I always, 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 always suggest as part of this regimen a ton of probiotics, both orally, before and after, and during, and, you know, rectally after, you know, when you do the coffee enema, you should retransplant some probiotics to put good flora back in because you've washed everything out good and the bad. And if you do too many coffee enemas without putting any good things back, you can get a yeast imbalance that will even be more of an issue than what you might have originally had because yeast is there to break you down when you die and to chew you up. And it can, when you're alive, be a very, very, very critical item. So I've done literally thousands of coffee flushes, personally. Yeah, seriously. Um, I did one every day for three and a half years, and before then I, I had done hundreds, so that qualifies for a couple thousand, easy. And <clears throat> I was a human being the rest of the day when I would do a coffee flush. I could get up, I could do whatever I wanted to do. Uh, you know, it would, and it takes a couple hours when you do it properly. You know, there's prep beforehand, you gotta do the coffee, you gotta get everything ready, you gotta make sure everything's cleaned up and the bathroom is prepared and you load up the enema bag and you do this and you do that and you have hot water to put the probiotics in and and then clean up on aisle five. You gotta make sure the bathroom is clean and sanitized and put hydrogen peroxide or bleach or whatever in there so you can clean it out because it is a messy process, you know? And put towels down so that, you know, as you're going to the toilet and back and forth to the tub that just in case there's an accident that, you know, there's not more cleanup on aisle five that really is needed and there's extra laundry because you're going back and forth on the towels and blah, blah, blah. So, if you're in need of a coffee enema and you're doing that, there are places you can go. Um, you can go usually to co colon hydrotherapist. They will do some colon hydrotherapy on you and they will also do a coffee enema for you as well if you want. And that's a a very good way to have somebody do it on your behalf in an environment you can just leave and all is well and it's all done. Of course, you know, unless you're Rockefeller, you can't do that every single day because there is definitely a price tag that goes along with that that would be epic if you had done thousands of them. So, it's preparedness, it's having loved ones be able to help you. Um, but there are other alternatives to doing a coffee flush. You do need to do that from time to time. Um, just as a maintenance to your body. It's, your body has filters. Your body, your organs are filters like in a car. If you got a brand new car and you drove it and you never changed any filters, it would run good six months, eight months, a year, year and a half. It's going to start to slow down to a point where now it's stopped and you take it to the mechanic. The mechanic's like, time for a new engine. Well, can't you rebuild? Like, no, dude. It's, the game is over. You never changed any of the filters. You never did any maintenance. It's done. No more car for you. Body's the same way. There's a point where, you know, <clears throat> it gets to be so difficult to rebuild your body that it's, um, without a lot of lateral assistance from friends, loved ones, and professionals, it's nearly impossible. So, you can clean and cleanse your body consistently and make it as efficient as possible so that you don't get to these low states where you need critical care. Or well, you do like a coffee flush once every X amount of time, three times, four times a year. <clears throat> or if you want once a month, you know, plan on just having all the ingredients and taking that day off, so to speak, and having a relaxing day, maybe go to the spa later that day, that type of idea, and just have a nice relaxing day. So all these things um, boil down to raising glutathione levels in the blood. And the coffee goes up through the portal vein and it tricks the liver out through a biochemical process of making more glutathione, up to 500 to 1,000 times more glutathione, depending on how long 
you hold the coffee flush between some time, you know, seconds for some people because, you know, they're, they're weak and they can hold it. And they're having toxic reactions to the body's trying to expel these things and or I was I was holding it 10 to 20 minutes. The longer you hold it, um, the better there's a threshold, I think, of 8 to 12 minutes where personally I think that, you know, you've reached your mass maximum capacity. And if you are sensitive to yeast or mold or things like that or you're already ailing, the innate mold that's already in coffee during the drying process initiates a yeast uh, firestorm or you know you can get a yeast overgrowth so that's why you put probiotics and stuff back in there so the longer you hold it the more yeast it gets built up so you know there's a balance and you shouldn't use freeze-dried coffee because the chemical process that's used to do the freeze drying process has chemicals left over so and always use organic everything during this process organic coffee and there's there's always instructions that go along with this um, in making the coffee it should always be on plastic. It should never touch metal or plastic or anything like that. It should always be like in glass or pirates containers and things like that when you're transporting it and when you're making it into these plastic containers that are PVC free um, with these um, like these little coffee cups. These little I have I think I have one left. I should have had it. Um, the, that are um, the brown paper that are not processed and bleached or anything like that. So. It is extraordinarily beneficial. I don't think I would be here if I hadn't done all these coffee flushes, to be perfectly frank. You know, my skin cleared up, and I was feeling better, and it was really a life-saving process. Um, I still do it on a consistent basis. I don't need to do it as often. Now there are alternatives to doing this to raise glutathione levels. There are products out there that will raise glutathione levels, like ASEA. I have a bottle of that somewhere. Glenn was not prepared today. Now, there's also a product by Lifestar that is like a whey protein. And what it is, it's a whey isolate. And the way they process it, it's processed at a low temperature. And it has these glutathione precursors in it and immunogens, like 600 milligrams of immunogens per dose, per serving. I forgot it was 15 or 30 grams. And it has all these glutathione precursors. And there's another glutathione precursor called NAC. And it's an uptake when it when it's uptaked in the body, it creates glutathione. It's a precursor, so you can put precursors and glutathione accelerators and things that turn into glutathione into your body as well. Now the thing is, when you're doing these things and you're not cleaning up the bowels and you're killing things off, like maybe like yeast, or you're getting all these heavy toxins out in a big rush, and not cleaning out the colon, then you have a Herxheimer reaction and you get nauseous and you think that these things are hurting you when in reality the things that are hurting you are dying off and they're getting into your body and they're making you nauseous because there's too many of them for your body to process. So it's always baby steps. It's doing things slowly um, and going and getting colon hydrotherapy, replacing probiotics and you know, just because you feel better doesn't mean you should, you know, ah, you know do overdo it because I have people that are ailing have a tendency if it feels good then you should do more and more and more you get to a point where you do too much and you get what's called a Herxheimer die off and now you think it's one of the things that you took and it's just that you've killed off too many things all at once so I always say seek out naturopath and nutritionists people that have been doing this for years and almost any naturopath you go to will know procedures for colon hydrotherapy and to do coffee enemas and it will be able to give you materials to do that. And you can find a ton of stuff on the internet, but I just think you need to be monitored. If you're ailing to the point where you need a coffee flush and you feel that you do, you need someone to monitor you because you can't monitor yourself and you're not an expert in this process. You want somebody to say, hey, you know, you need to do this colon cleanse and then do the coffee flush after X amount of days after you talk to me and, I, and I'm getting a gauge on how you're doing. So you need a coach during this process, and you need somebody who's professional and has knowledge in these types of processes. It's extremely important, because if you're feeling that you need to do a coffee flush, then you need to be supervised. And if you're doing it just for maintenance, you know, to maintenance your body, then you probably can self-supervise yourself. But it wouldn't actually hurt to have professional advice, because what you know... And what they know, no matter how intelligent you are, they're just, you know, if they've seen it a hundred times, they're going to know things that you don't. It's just the way it is. You can't read enough on the internet and take enough of your own time to have hundreds of hours worth of wisdom, thousands of hours worth of wisdom. It's a lifetime of experience is what you're paying for. So pay for it.
and just deal with it. So a lot of people say, hey, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to pay for this person. Well, you pay for a dentist. Are you going to actually work on your own mouth? Or if you need stitches, are you going to try to stitch yourself up unless you're Billy Bob out in the forest and you have no choice or that's just your thing? Um, you really need to seek professional advice. So this is like a summary. I could go on about this for hours, but this is a really concise amount of information. Um, if you want information on the glutathione and accelerators, just send me an instant message or um, post here on this video. I'll send you links for those. Um, there's one that I really like that's in Sedoma, Arizona. It's called Lifestar. And their products are fantastic. They're non-GMO and they have the highest quality in ingredients and they, they give it love and TLC during the entire process. So that's everything that wants to share. Thank you very much for joining me. Glenn Parker, High Vibration Foundation, coaching life, business, and spiritual. Also retreats, boys and girls. Don't forget retreats because you can come and learn about all this stuff firsthand. And be in a more loving and calm environment. As a matter of fact, I've been talking to a couple of naturopaths to go do retreats with so that you can actually have like a health type of retreat where you can go and talk to a naturopath and have spiritual advice concurrently and, and you know, have something that's very loving and very aiding that you can take away of some practical experience and knowledge. And you know, there's tons of stuff going down in the description, so check that out. Spiritual guidance, professional guidance, life coaching, retreats for some reason i do love retreat -da -da. and you know points of contact email addresses social media and if you do like this video please do like subscribe and share and you know add to playlists all that good stuff and if you do have any questions whatsoever i'm always very very happy to answer questions and comments so just send them to me